2.3 biogeochemical cycles so for 2.3 uh, the first one before we want to describe cycles we need to know the definition for biogeochemical okay so we can divide the terms into three parts okay uh, later we will learn more on the definition so for biogeochemical cycles we will learn about three cycles the first one carbon cycle uh, the second one is nitrogen cycle and the last one is phosphorus cycle and then for biogeochemical cycle we will learn a uh, few terminologies such as uh, reservoir pool and cycling pool okay let's move on to the next slide uh, for the definition of biogeochemical it refer to the pathway or cycling of chemical elements through an ecosystem which involve both biotic and abiotic component okay so we want to cycle chemical elements such as carbon oxygen nitrogen hydrogen phosphorus and so on so how we want to cycle these elements actually we need both biotic and abiotic component okay uh, so for abiotic component non-living component actually uh, we have uh, for example here uh, atmosphere soil and water okay so non-living component we also refer as a reservoir pool okay empangan lah kolam empangan means that the most uh, the main storage of the elements is in reservoir pool so dalam case ni atmosphere soil water and so on and then uh, the chemical elements also will be recycled uh, through biotic component okay so biotic components such as animal and plant okay so why it is called biogeochemical so because it involves bio which is organism we we refer specifically to organism such as plant or animals and then why it is called geo because of geology we refer to environment and the last one chemicals because uh, it involves chemical elements or nutrients such as carbon nitrogen phosphorus and so on okay uh, so that is the definition and description of biogeochemical cycle so function is to recycle chemical element to sustain the ecosystem okay so apa-apa yang kita gunakan chemical element such as carbon for example so we know that for example human we made up of uh, we our body actually made up of uh, carbon okay so dekat mana nak jumpa carbon tu actually carbon present in carbohydrates carbon present in protein because we know that protein the monomer is amino acid and the formula is ncc so ada carbon dekat situ okay and then carbon also present in lipids ataupun fats okay ingat tak glycerol uh, ada carbon dekat situ okay please uh do remind back about your semester one chapter one molecules of life and then carbon also present in um nuclei acid okay okay uh, let's move on so for biogeochemical cycle component we have two component the first one we call as a abiotic component or reservoir pool the second component of biogeochemical adalah cycling pool ataupun dia berada pada biotic component benda yang hidup lah okay so uh, kita tengok dulu pada reservoir pool which is the first component of biogeochemical cycle uh, so this component involve a biotic component so a biotic component contohnya tadi atmosphere soil and water uh, for reservoir pool, the chemical elements such as carbon, nitrogen and so on are stored for long periods of time. Okay, uh, So, dia disimpan lama dekat bahagian ni lah. 
Bila kita nak guna untuk biotic component, okay, baru dia dikeluarkan daripada reservoir pool. And then usually chemical elements are larger in quantity. Okay, lebih banyak sebab dia punya storage lebih besar. Okay, reservoir pool ni lebih besar lah. Kalau kita compare atmosphere dengan animals, memang atmosphere paling besar lah. Okay, way too big compare to uh, plants ataupun animals. Okay, untuk cycling pool involve biotic components such as plant ataupun animals and then chemical elements such as nitrogen, carbon and so on are held for short periods of time. Okay, sekejap sajalah uh, dilalu uh, melalui biotic component benda hidup ni. Okay, uh, pada at certain period of time, dia akan kembali semula kepada reservoir pool. Okay. And then chemical elements are in smaller quantity. So, kita guna sedikit saja daripada main storage which is the reservoir pool. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok gambar dekat bawah ni. So, kita start for example from reservoir pool. Kata kalau kita refer pada carbon cycle. So, we want to recycle chemical elements carbon. So, from the reservoir pool, carbon is absorbed by the cycling pool. So, cycling pool which is uh, plants or plants will use the carbon for nutrients. Okay, after a certain period of time, for example, the plants dies or the plant undergo cellular respiration or the plant undergo excretion, the carbon will be released back to the reservoir pool. Okay. So, disebabkan nama dia cycle. So, dia akan dalam bentuk cycle lah. Okay, dia tidak dah stop. Okay. Uh, for example, kalau kita start uh, our journey from A to B and then uh, going to C and then C going back to A. So, dekat mana kita start, dekat situ lah kita stop. Itu cycle. Okay. But if we start from A to B and then to C and then we stop at C, uh, that one is not cycle. Okay, cycle, cycle adalah start dan stop pada point yang sama. Okay, moving on. We enter the first cycle of biogeochemical cycle for carbon cycle. So carbon we know it is essential for protein, nuclear acid, lipids and carbohydrate. Uh, kita tahu dia memang present in that uh, molecules of life. So untuk carbon, the main storage or the reservoir pool is the atmosphere. Okay, carbon paling banyak dekat atmosphere. And then Uh, paling banyak juga dekat ocean. Okay. So, others that we can find carbon adalah dalam fossil fuel ataupun limestone. Sebab limestone ni uh, CaCO3, okay, calcium carbonate. So, ada C, carbon jugalah dekat situ. Okay. Tapi paling banyak carbon ni kita boleh jumpa dekat atmosphere dan juga water lah sebagai dia punya reservoir pool, main storage dia. Okay. Uh, untuk cycling pool dia which is biotic component akan guna carbon tu uh, adalah plants, animals, bacteria dengan fungi. Okay. Tapi kita fokus, uh, kita fokus pada semualah. Um, semualah. Okay. Nanti kita akan tengoklah dia punya uh, cycle. Okay. Dia punya diagram. Okay. So untuk carbon ni uh, dia digunakan macam mana? Okay. Actually, untuk setiap organism tu, dia dalam bentuk yang berbeza kita gunakan carbon. Sebab kita takkan guna carbon solely as carbon. Okay? Dia mesti dalam bentuk yang lain lah. Uh, lebih kompleks. Okay? So, for example, on the first point, uh, carbon is stored as a starch in plants. Okay? Uh, starch which is the polysaccharide, kan? which is the most complex carbohydrates. Uh, so, carbon disimpan sebagai starch dalam plants. Okay, itu one way of using carbon or one way of recycle carbon. And the second point, carbon is stored as a carbon dioxide in atmosphere and then carbon is stored as a glycogen in animal and then carbon is stored as a bicarbonate ion in ocean. So, bicarbonate ion, dia punya formula HCO3 minus, okay. And then carbon is also stored as a calcium carbonate in carbonate rocks. 
ataupun uh, kalsium karbonat dekat uh, animals uh, ataupun organism yang ada shells for example uh, kerang and so on and then carbon is also stored in coal petroleum humus and so on okay uh, so banyak sebenarnya cara macam mana carbon ni disimpan atau digunakan lah okay so bukannya solely as a carbon we use the carbon okay okay let's move on Okay, uh, carbon is fixed. So, how we want to fix carbon? Actually, there are many ways. Okay, one of the ways adalah through photosynthesis. So, carbon in terms of carbon dioxide will be used by the plant to make photosynthesis. Okay, and then for the second one, carbon... Uh, Involved in cellular respiration means that if plants and animals undergo cellular respiration, they use oxygen, they will give out carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide will be uh, released back to the atmosphere. Okay, the third one decomposition uh, means that uh, if the organism is die, for example, the plant dies or the animal dies, bacteria and fungi will decompose the. A dead organism okay so from the decomposition process carbon dioxide will be released and going back to atmosphere which is the reservoir pool okay uh, and then another way is how carbon is fixed is through combustion okay ataupun burning of biomass so let's say we burn fossil fuels from the burning or combustion of the fossil fuel, CO2 is released to the atmosphere. Okay. And then the last one is through weathering. Okay. Untuk weathering ni, dia fokus kepada ocean. Okay. Macam tadi fokus pada darat kan, land. This one is in ocean or water. So, for weathering, some aquatic organisms such as mollusk, mollusca, kita dah belajar chapter 1 biodiversity, phylum mollusca. Okay. Uh, contohnya kerang, uh, ketam and so on. Uh, use the dissolved carbon dioxide. So, untuk um, weathering dalam uh, ocean, carbon dioxide, eh, carbon tu digunakan in terms of bicarbonate ion. Sebab, uh, bila CO2, for example, dia bergabung dengan H2O, so dia akan membentuk H2CO3, carbonic acid. And then carbonic acid ni dia akan dissociate jadi H plus dan juga HCO3 minus. Okay. Uh, so, uh, any shell animals that live under the ocean, dia akan gunalah okay, uh, HCO3 minus tu untuk buat dia punya shell. Okay, which is uh, which is we know that shell made up of calcium carbonate. Okay. Uh, so, ada carbon dekat sini lah. Uh, so, shell animals, dia akan guna carbon in terms of bicarbonate ion. Okay. Dia tak boleh gunalah dalam bentuk CO2. Dia mesti guna dalam bentuk bicarbonate ion. Dissolve CO2. So, uh, when mollusks die, their shells sink to the sea floor and deposit as limestone. And then the process of uh, weathering, which is years of exposure to water, will slowly dissolve the calcium carbonate, thus releasing CO2 back to the water and atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so, bila, for example, kerang, okay. so bila kerang tu dia mati, Tinggal shell saja, Shell tu dia akan jatuh ke paling bawah laut yang kita panggil sebagai sediment lah. Okay. Uh, so, bila dia dah jatuh dekat uh, bawah laut tu, apa yang berlaku? Ada proses weathering which is years of exposure to water akan menyebabkan kerang uh, shell, the shells that is made up of calcium carbonate dissolve. Okay. And then release back the carbon in terms of CO2 to the water and atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so, ada lima cara lah macam ni kita nak fix carbon. 
ok uh, so ini antara contoh gambar so let's say we start with photosynthesis first sebab itu yang paling senang ok ok so carbon dioxide in atmosphere ni reservoir pool ok so carbon dioxide is used in photosynthesis by plant so plant dia guna carbon dioxide tu untuk buat photosynthesis dapat food dapat oksigen okay food in uh, here in terms of glucose and then what happen the animals will feed the plant so bila animal makan plants tu animal akan dapat source of carbon juga okay so which we know that carbon is important for uh, carbohydrates uh, protein uh, lipid and so on Okay, so at the same time, uh, when the plants use the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, plant also undergo cellular respiration, which the plant uh, will use oxygen and then release carbon dioxide. So when the plant release carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide will going back to the atmosphere. Okay, uh, so arrow yang warna pink cair ni refer pada respiration. Okay, uh, same goes to animal. Animal pun akan undergo cellular respiration and then dia akan release CO2 back to the atmosphere. Okay, okay. at one point animals and plants will die. So, they will decompose by bacteria and fungi. Uh, so, what happen is from the decomposition, actually, uh, CO2 will be released back to the atmosphere. Okay, itu one way. Another way is then if the animals and plants is decomposed and then uh, for million of years, they duduk dekat uh, bawah bumi, okay, dia akan menjadi fossils. Okay, and then after that, From fossils, kita akan dapat fuels, okay? So, kita ada oil, coal and gas. Let's say oil, okay, yang kita guna dalam kita punya transportation, okay? Let's say um, car and motorcycle. Uh, if we burn the oil, we will give out carbon dioxide, okay? Uh, so, from the process of combustion or burning, carbon dioxide once again will be Uh, release back to the reservoir pool which is in this case atmos atmosphere okay and then another way adalah in the ocean so CO2 will be diffused into the ocean uh, and will become as dissolved CO2 which is bicarbonate ion and then bicarbonate ion will be used by the organism that have shell to make their own shell which is their shell made up of calcium carbonate and then at one point when the shell organism die uh, the shells of the organism will be uh, sink to the bottom of the ocean to become limestone okay and then after years of exposure to water the limestone will be dissolved and The carbon dioxide will be going back to atmosphere. Okay, this one adalah another diagram for representation of carbon dioxide. Okay, okay that's all. Thank you.